Yo mates, today we'll talk about the top 10 interview questions that are suitable for a front-end developer position. So if you want to become a junior developer and even after you become a junior developer, even if you are in your fifth year as a software developer, you'll still be asked these questions. And I have like 50 of them and I have prepared them for my students, for my clients. But I'm gonna share with you the top 10, the ones that are being asked the most, the ones that I have been asked all the time and the ones that I have been recently asked when I started looking for a new contract, okay? So some of them, they are related to JavaScript. Some of them, they are related to React. Some of them, they are related to Redux. I'm gonna see what I'm gonna plug from there and I'm gonna give to you. Some of them, they are very, very simple. So they are like uh, one, one sentence answer but some of them can be tied in with a story okay so for example the first question is what is react here you can talk about react being this library that allows you to build uh, user interfaces okay so here you can say something about the fact that actually your portfolio is being built with react and when i say portfolio i'm not saying your website i'm saying the actual application has been built with react now your portfolio shouldn't be built with react should be built with plain html and css and plain javascript because react is too heavy and um, it's too much for such a simple um, like application, okay? Application, in, not in the terms of like JavaScript application, but the tool is too powerful for the purpose that you want to use it, okay? So if you have a website, just use plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, don't use React, okay? You want to use React when you want to build an application and you can say exactly the reasoning why you chose to use just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for your website, but you have used React for your application that's inside your portfolio okay now let's see what else we got in here oh good one uh what are the major features of react just grabbing my coffee okay i'm gonna answer these questions like i'm unprepared okay i just have the questions in here and i'm gonna assume that someone is asking me this question okay so i might be totally off but i'm gonna tell you how i'm gonna answer these questions and then you can go ahead and do your own research and make sure that what i'm saying is right and you can come and correct me in the comment section okay we are here to learn i don't know everything i never claim to know everything i just know a few things here and there okay but the major features of react the first major feature is the state okay then you have props and then you have components and then you have the virtual DOM, okay? I believe that these are the four main features of React. And I said, I believe because maybe someone else, the, the, the developer on the other side of the, of the conversation might think that the virtual DOM is not that important or might think that components are not that important, okay? But in my opinion, state, the state, the props and the components and the virtual DOM are the most important ones. Now, you might get the next question, which is what is the difference between state and props? right you might be getting this question because sometimes the interviewer is leading you towards a path right is ask throwing a question that you give an answer then the interviewer is going to follow up to see that you actually understand the difference between state and props in this case so you could say that props are read only while a state is read and you can also change it you can update it you can modify it right so that's like a like that's like the third question here now follow the next question okay components uh, they can ask you okay what's jsx here you can say something like jsx looks like html but it's actually not it's just syntactic sugar where bubble is interpreting that jsx and it's converting it to plain javascript now that's the fourth question the fifth question can be how does the browser understand jsx and your your answer is going to be the browser cannot understand jsx that's why we have bubble which is transpiling uh, the JSX into plain JavaScript so the browser can understand it. Okay, let me go to the next questions. It's funny how this come like that. Um, let's see. Another React question that popped up here. I'm, I'm not doing this on purpose, but I'm just scrolling down and I'm just picking, picking up questions, okay? Next question is, what does lifting state up means and why do we do it? So, imagine you have a child component that's living inside a parent component. If we have all our state at the parent level, every time we change state, all our components will re-render. So imagine you have a to-do app and then you have a form and then you have a list. If you'd have the state that captures the state, the value of the input, 
Every time you type in, your whole application is going to re-render. Your entire list is going to re-render. And if you have, let's say, 1,000 items, your entire application is going to re-render those 1,000 items. So to avoid that, what we want to do is we want to move that state that holds the input value within another component. That component is going to take in the user input, is going to save that user input in a state. And then when we hit submit, we take that state from the, the, from the child and then we lift it up to the parent so the parent can add it into, into its estate and then we will re-render the application once we, once we have that piece of state from the child up into the parent. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so we do it to prevent unnecessary re-renders, okay? And we also do it because we want to keep our code uh, modular, okay? We, we don't want to have our entire application in one single page. We want to move our pieces into different parts to organize ourselves better. Okay, let's see. Next question. Okay, what's the benefit of using async await? I'm not even sure. Is this the sixth question, seventh question? So what are the benefits of using async await? So async await allows us to write a synchronous code that works in a synchronous way. So previously we had uh, the promises and we are using dot then, right? But then if we have, let's say, a console log, then a fetch, then another console log, first console log is going to be executed, then the second console log is going to be executed, and then whatever comes out of that promise is going to be executed last, okay? So it's going to be one, three, two, okay? That's going to be the output of the, of the console if we console log something after we fetch some, some data from an external server. But with async await, we can pause the execution of our code Okay, maybe that's not best, the best way to describe it. That, that's not a technical way to describe it, but essentially we are pausing the code, our code, the execution of our code until we receive a response back from the server if we are making an API call. And then just then when we receive the answer back, we continue to the next line. So then we'll have console log one fires, then we wait for the API call, we console log whatever comes from the API call, and then we console log the last uh we trigger the last console log okay so we are making a synchronous code look and handle synchronously what is local storage versus session storage well local storage is we are, with local storage we are basically persisting data in our computers uh like database right but the difference is that session storage session storage behaves in a similar way with local storage so we can save like an array we can save a boolean in in in, in our browser but then once we click the tab off once we click the tab or once we click the window all that data that we stored in our application gets thrown away while, while with local storage that data gets persisted until we manually or programmatically destroy it or remove it from our browser okay maybe it's not the best technical way to describe this thing but that's how i would describe it if i would have to explain it in an interview okay i'm i'm not i'm never preparing for interviews i'm just going like hey this is me. I hope you like me <laughs> and I hope I like you too. Okay. I'm not even numbering this question. So let's see what's the next one. <clears throat> yeah. Good one. How to copy an array. And then you can also say how to copy an object. Then here you can say we can copy an array using um, the concat method or we can use the spread operator. And to copy an object, we can use, again, the spread operator or we can use object.assign, okay? What is hoisting? That's a pretty good one. So hoisting is basically, so JavaScript gives us the ability to use variables, sometimes, that's, we can talk about that in a bit. We can use variables or, func or functions before we declare them, okay? So for example, you can have a function that says, hello, but then at line one, we're going to invoke that function, hello. So we can do that because of hoisting. Basically, JavaScript is taking our code and is pulling it up so we can use it before we uh, declare it. Okay. Now we can get into what is the difference between var, let, and const. Okay. There are, that's a very, very powerful question, very simple question that's throwing a lot of people off. And here, there are four things that you want to mention. Uh, let me see. The first thing that's the most I guess they're not obvious, but let's, let's talk about scope, okay? So var has function scope, while let and const have function and block scope. So block is an if else statement, a for loop, or a while loop, 
or simply just opening curly braces. That would be a block. Wherever you have curly braces, that's a block. While var, it doesn't have that. It only has function scope. Now we can talk about assignment, right? We can have var and let without any value assigned to them. So we can say var a and then nothing or let b and then nothing. But we cannot do the same thing with, uh, with a constant variable. So if we have const c equal, const c that's gonna throw an error, okay? We need to, we need to initialize const c with some sort of variable, with some sort of value, either true, false, a number, an array, an object, whatever it is. We cannot reassign a constant variable, but we can reassign var and let. So we talked about that, that, that. Okay, An another thing that is pretty important is that it's hoisting, okay? Var, let, and const, they are all hoisted. Okay, there is only one difference that's like a gotcha. Even though they are hoisted and technically you can access them before you declare them with constant let that's going to throw an error okay i don't remember the exact uh, error that's going to be thrown you can look this up after but if we have console log a and then you declare var a equals five your console is going to uh, output undefined okay because javascript is going to create var a at the top which is going to have no value assigned to it so it's going to be undefined so you can access it but if you are trying to do the same thing with let and const, that's gonna throw for you an error. So we talked about that, that, that. I think that's all. Anyway, I'm going about these questions as I would be going uh, about it in a live interview, okay? So I'm unprepared as usual. Oh, good one. What is the difference between double equals and triple equals? So this is like, it can either give you a lot of brownie points or it can totally destroy the interview for you. So this is what you have to say. 100%. Double equals checks the value, while triple equals checks the value and the type. Super important. If you just remember this sentence or phrase, it's gonna get you so many benefits, okay? Yeah, I guess these are all the questions that I believe are pretty important. Camera died. So as I said, these are the questions that I believe are the most important. I haven't answer them in a very, very technical way, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what they are. And then you can go ahead and then further search on Google what these things are, because you just want to know that what they are, and then you can fact check me, okay? And then when you fact check me, then first you can tell me in the comments if I was wrong. And then secondly, when you fact check something, then you can actually, you are doing some sort of active learning. You know what I mean? So when you are doing active learning, that's when you're actually learning the, the best, you know, because I have the questions for my students and I don't have the answer for them because I want them to go ahead and actively trying to answer those questions. Okay. Because if they're actively trying to answer those questions, they will be putting a lot of effort and they'll actually remember it, internalize it, understand the concepts and then ideally they will come to me and they will say hey can you practice these questions and then i'll say probably yes and then then we'll work on the delivery okay so learning the concepts is important and then learning how to deliver that's another skill in itself i don't know if i can make a video about that and i don't know if anyone is interested in that it's definitely a more personal kind of thing i don't know how much a video can help with that but maybe i can put something together and help you out so first of all if anyone counted the questions, let me know in the comments how many questions I have been given you. And then two, if you've ever been in, in an interview, how many times have you heard these questions um, asked before? I'm actually curious because as I said, I put these things together based on my experience interviewing and based on my students and my clients. Uh, interview. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you found this video valuable, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And by the way, I think I'm on Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, uh, there should be a link in the description. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.